What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day, and um, it is hump day. I hope you all are getting over the hump. Um, it's going to be kind of cool today. The Red Brick House Committee actually is going to meet for the first time in a couple of years. And it's going to be interesting because since the last time they met, this house has been fixed. So it'll be fun to hear what they have to say here. I'm ready to go in a little bit. We have a situation here. Um, basically, I think the Cowboys are going back to their old ways. When it's time to pay somebody, typically what happens is bad feelings. When it was Des Bryant's time to get paid, we heard all kinds of things from the Cowboys. Des Bryant has gone on the Pivot podcast and kind of said you politics were being made um, against him being able to get the football and stuff. We heard things about the police having had to be called to Des Bryant's house six times. Um, we heard there was a tape that was could be a tape. There might be a tape out there that's ten times worse than Ray Rice's. Still ain't seen no tape. And so it's kind of like the quarterback or the wide receiver, the player gets beat down. Demarcus Lawrence, you know, oh, we thought we had a deal. You know, it's a money grab by the agent. Zeke Elliott, you know, we're not going to reset the market. It always gets ugly. Now, it's a shame because the contract that Dak Prescott has, that has the no trade clause and now, we're hearing all kinds of scenarios of, you know, what if the Cowboys traded with the Chicago Bears and got Justin Fields here, you know? So, oh, yeah, so a guy that's not even 500 in his career, that guy will get you the Super Bowl. Okay, I got you. But trade for Justin Fields and uh, uh, their number nine pick and give them Dak Prescott. Well, that only works if Dak Prescott wants to. The question you have to start asking is, with the amount of, disrespect that Dak Prescott is receiving and the way things are going, are the Cowboys actually trying to make him want to waive his no trade clause? So that way they don't have to pay him. This was an interesting take. Dominique Foxworthy put it out here that it's just ridiculous. I want you to listen to this tape here for a second. Everybody's trying to run out of town, and he doesn't do it for a quarterback that's been there for freaking 10 years, bro. It's absolutely absurd. It makes me sick, man, because I, I can't imagine them doing this to any other quarterback mm -hmm. in football at this level. I, frankly, I can't imagine doing it to any other quarterback because <clears throat> put aside the conversation that I think Marcus was trying to have about how good Dak is or isn't. Like, I believe he's good enough to win a championship. He hasn't done it yet, but that doesn't matter. There's a basic level of respect that you show to your teammates. Amen. Nobody would do that to a cornerback, a linebacker, a tackle, or and definitely not the franchise quarterback. And I think it goes back to Jerry Jones yep. and generally how he's treated Dak Prescott. And I believe that some of the people see this writing on the wall and they believe that it is okay to treat the best quarterback that team's had since Troy Aikman. Yeah. treat him like he's just an average guy and again it doesn't matter how good he is you don't do this to your teammates amen you just don't no. and I understand that it wasn't the teammates doing it it was the family y'all need to step up yeah. and say something and I think it's be a teammate connect. it just and Dak he's not perfect by any stretch no but he came mm -hmm. in as a fourth round draft pick as a rookie and did enough to be good for this team he's been good ever since and touched on great every now and then and Jerry Jones rewarded him by pretending like he wasn't going to sign him, like he had another option, undercut him. The man spoke out uh, on the opposite, on the wrong side of the kneeling Kaepernick stuff. He had your back, Jerry. Where are you at now? And that, I mean, it's, it's repulsive to me that they could treat a human being like this, that they work with and team and the teammate, and they, they, they're they supposed to care about. I don't care how good you think he is. Mm -hmm. Don't come out and say he ain't it. Yeah. And that's crushing. The man. attacks have been much more personal. Mm -hmm. Than they have yes, been well, professional. So, 
when Dak takes, unfortunately, Dak takes so much hate and vitriol uh, on a personal level throughout his career. Now he's being hit, what I would describe as friendly fire. I actually, the same way I felt about Mike Tomlin, like, okay, Pittsburgh fans don't want him. I wish he would go. So you could see what life mm-hmm. without him would yeah. be like. Yeah. Uh, I almost wish Dak, I wish Dak had a little bit of Dominique in him, <laughs> where he would actually fire back and say, like, a word? Instead, he is the model, like, he is just... You don't ever take shots. You don't ever... He, he he's just so, sort of like, you know what? It is, it's above me now. I wish he would. Be, and I wish he would actually get out of Dallas. Because, because I don't know... Because the narrative is he can't win the big one. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. He has a long career ahead of him. But if, if your own teammate's family is saying this, it reminds me of in Cleveland, like... Odell's father going on Twitter and like yeah. ultimately Odell wanted out of there and it's like these things you wonder if you're Dak. It's but like, that was Odell's saying well, behind the scenes. It's it. clearly not. Oh, the reason I had this career year is because I was throwing you the ball. Like yeah. clearly you're saying something else. It may not be CD telling his mom to say this or Micah telling his brother to say this, but this is the reality in Dallas. Everything is bigger. You hey, have to know this is poetic, gonna be an issue. Poetic justice. All right. Sit on that 59 oh, 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 oh. mil and yeah. bust that cap and sit around, bro. I'm telling you right. If I'm Dak Prescott, I'm, I'm petty. I'm petty. Go ahead, Marcus. There you go. One second, man. Listen, bro. It, I, got, I got crazy ass uncles. I had uncles that didn't want Tony Romo to be the quarterback. Obviously, they never went on TV and said it, bro. The, these family members are emotional. All right. Like, and the, that's why I pointed out the the no defense is the problem. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. The the, right. the players not having defense. Yeah. I'm not owner. gonna get on TV and talk. That's like us. That's like us talking about people that tell us we crazy on Twitter. The family members are mad. They mad. They emotional. Right. They wanted to go to the Super Bowl and they ain't got a damn thing that we, we're going there. They can't affect the play. They can't affect the way Dak plays, CD plays, or Michael Parson plays. They are in their feelings about the Dallas Cowboys not winning, and Dak is the easy target for them to blame. The, the defense is obviously what we're focused on. Why haven't you guys came out and said, nah, Dak a real one. Dak That's is the it. quarterback we feel like. There Dak you go. Why haven't your teammates and stuff come back and said, you know, Dak's a real one and so on. Um, we heard Micah Parsons come out there and say something, but we ain't heard nothing from CD. So the question begs is, with everything like this, you know, we're hearing Brian Brodus who's basically saying Stephen Jones, a.k.a. Catboy, and me and Game Time Brian, we're going to be going to, we're going to be talking about this later on tonight. (sighs) With all of this stuff that's going on here, uh, with the Cowboys, Catboy, and so on, and if it is, in fact, that you are not going to do anything to try and help Dak Prescott, that he is continually being the fall guy, that he's not good enough to elevate the team, you know, with the team that you're putting out on the field, is it possible that Dak could say, you know what, Uh, I'm going to take my $59 million this year and I ain't signing another contract? Or that he'd waive his no-wave clause to go to the right team? I don't know what the answers are, but if you're Dak Prescott, you know, you've gotten yourself, you got your name out there. You got a hell of a lot of the Dallas Cowboys records. You've been the captain of America's team. The only thing that's left out there for you that you need to solidify yourself in immortality is a Super Bowl ring. And if the Cowboys are approaching the offseason the way it sounds like Brian Brodus thinks they will, that they won't be taking risks, they won't be a player in free agency, they'll just kind of doing bottom basement money-saving moves, then maybe you need to consider waiving that cause and going someplace where you have an opportunity. Cowboys and Cowboy fans don't realize how good they have it having Dak Prescott. You're going to find out when he's gone the hard way. In fact, I dare say, take a look at 2021. Take a good look at 2021. We had heard there's no drop-off from Andy Dalton to Dak Prescott. We found out that that wasn't true. Okay, good people. It's getting crazy out here. It is getting crazy. Peace out.